In this video, we are going to see the topic of positions. What we are going to see in this video and in the following one is valid for any M object. In the particular case of this video, all the commands are valid for both Manum CE and Manum GL. To use Jupyter with Manum CE, we can do it in several ways. We can define the quick commands at the beginning or at the end. Or we can define a string with the commands and execute them as follows. I am going to use the magic command at the end because this way VS Code highlights the code better. The first thing to know is that the camera has these dimensions. The division of the width by the height is called aspect ratio, and most modern screens use the aspect ratio of 16 ninths. This can be changed, but we will see this in later videos. To position the objects, Madam uses a Cartesian system with origin at the center. When you create an object, it will be positioned in the center of the camera in most cases. We will see exceptions to this rule later. In Manum's vocabulary, the word mob means any M object. I will be adding the object called number plane, which provides me with a grid with coordinates. There are two types of positions, absolute and relative. Absolute positions take as reference the camera dimensions. Relative positions take as reference a coordinate or another M object. We will start with absolute positions. The first method is move to. This method takes as argument a vector, that is, a coordinate reference to the center of the screen, or another M object. In both versions of Manum the following vectors are defined as constants, the origin, the unit vectors, which are orthogonal to each other, and the corner vectors. In Manum it is most common to use linear combinations of the vectors instead of defining specific coordinates, and that makes the code easier to read. In the case of move to, it will not change if we apply the same method several times. As I said before, the move to method also accepts other objects as arguments. The getCenter method returns the center of an object, which we can use as a reference. There are other getters that can help us to obtain certain coordinates, 
Just keep in mind that all these methods use the bounding box as a reference. If you don't know what that is, you can watch this excellent video. The next method we will see is to edge. If we have an object positioned inside the camera, we can use this method to move the object to one of the edges. This method also receives an argument called buff, which means buffer. This buffer is the gap between the edge of the object and the edge of the screen. If the buffer is zero, then the object and screen touch. The buffer can also be negative. We can move an M object to the corner using this method twice, or we can use the to corner method, which does exactly the same thing. Now let's move on to relative positions. The shift method takes the current positioning of an M object as a reference. Unlike move to, if you apply the shift method several times, the object will move. The next to method takes as reference the edge of an object or a coordinate. It also accepts the buffer parameter.
An additional parameter is aligned edge. With this argument, we can control on which edge we want to align the object. By default, this value is origin. The last method is align to. It is used to align the edge of an object with another object or with another coordinate. It is similar to what the aligned edge argument of the next to method does. And so we conclude the first part of this section. Remember that you can support this project through PayPal and Patreon, the links are in the description. In the next video, we will see the transformations that we can do to the M objects.